Hello everyone and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I'm your host Stan Rattan and this is the Blue Collar Wine Program where I try to help you spend your wine dollars wisely. Thanks for watching. Um, beautiful day outside. Summer's coming up quickly. A lot going on. Um, French Open's on. Played a little golf today. Enjoyed that. And uh, today we're going to taste some wines from Handcraft Artisan Winery. And uh, this is part of the uh, Delicato Family Vineyards portfolio and it is spearheaded by Cheryl in Delicato. And that name Delicato is familiar to a lot of us. Delicato is a huge brand. Uh, of course they've changed that to Domino now, but there's so many labels under the Delicato uh, family name, including Handcraft, led by Cheryl in Delicato. <laughs> also um, Boda Box, uh, Gnarly Head, Twisted Zen Irony Brazen, I had to write them down, I couldn't remember all the brands. In 2006, Delicato Family Vineyard was the 13th largest winery in the United States. I don't know where they're at now, but that's, it just gives you an idea how big they are. Now, I like a lot of their brands. I sell a lot of Boda Box at the store. It's a great box wine. In fact, uh, many of the Boda Box wines, beat, we did a box versus bottle blind tasting. You know, we poured them into decanters and everybody came through and they tried these wines. And believe it or not, Boda Box beat out the bottled wine in Malbec. So I've been impressed with Boda Box. I've always been a fan of Gnarly Head. I think they're, they're great, you know, just everyday reds. Uh, you know, varietally correct. They're good wines. Twisted Zin, one of my top selling Zins. And of course, Irony. I love the Irony line. I like uh, their Pinot Noir, their Cab. Excellent quality wines for the price. So these are new to the uh, Handcraft uh, label. Uh, they do Cab, Pinot, Chard. You know, they do the, the, the pretty much a lot of the different wines. They all run around, uh, you know, eleven dollars um, and these also I, I looked I looked I looked and most of the websites I looked at said thirteen dollars um, I'm guessing they go about the same as some of the other wines I'm thinking around eleven dollars is probably what you're gonna find these at these were sent to me in the mail so I um, thought I'd do a little YouTube video on them you know review them online and uh, hopefully you know they show well oops Better take the screw cap off the white. Before I get started though on these wines, which I'll do in a second, um, I want to talk a little bit about Handcraft Winery. Uh, in Delicato, Cheryl has a, a big uh, Italian family heritage. Her This is third generation. And you know, the great great grandfather came from Italy, planted the vineyards, and now the family is continuing in the progress of, you know, uh, new labels, new brands, winemaking, all that incredible uh, story behind that. But uh, the winemaker is, I'm going to butcher this, I was going to call Rubina, who sent me these samples, Alicia Isais, is I believe how you say it. So, woman winemaker which, you know, uh, she asked me if I might want to do a little uh, article on women in wine, which I probably will do, although it's more and more common. Now they say half of the students in UC Davis are women uh, enrolled. And I know a lot of women winemakers, uh, so it really isn't so much an issue anymore. Uh, but it was interesting. When I went to Italy in 2006, we only went to one winery that was uh, all women one winery and it was the only place we went that they served beef sticks. Every other winery would talk about, hey, yeah, you know, when you're drinking Chianti, you know, it's good to have protein, that protein breaks down the tannins, all that stuff. And only one winery actually gave us beef sticks to have with the wine tasting. 
and it was an all-women winery. I wish I'd remember which winery that was. I, I beat myself because I lost the brochure on the winery. But anyway, point is, you know, that the women were the only ones to figure out to actually give us some meat with the Chiantes we were drinking. Uh, uh, this uh, handcraft winery is up to about 150,000 cases a year. Uh, like I said, this, this, these two blends are a new addition to the winery. And um, Cheryl went to nursing school, and because of that, she has a, a, a lot of passion for people, especially women that get breast cancer. So they've, last year they uh, donated $100,000 to the uh, breast to breast cancer research, so it's a good cause behind these handcraft wines. Just something to remember, and that's always a good thing. I have my uh, tech sheets here, so I can tell you what's in these wines. Let's get started with the white. Rolls in about eleven dollars, um, you know, and and we're talking. I always give the price that you're probably going to pay. They call it post off, where they knock the price down. They usually do that on a monthly basis. So I'm guessing you can get this anywhere from $11 to $13. And this is the Handcraft Artisan Collection White. And let me look at the tech sheet, tell you what the, um, the blend is on this. It's Riesling, Sauvignon Blanc, Viognier Moscato, and Pinot Grigio. And one of the things that Cheryl, because of her Italian heritage, she likes to throw some Italian varietals into her blends, into all her wines actually, to, uh, and they found that this gives them a little lift. There's the label for you. And um, so that's kind of celebrating her Italian heritage. Throw in a little bit, this has Moscato of course and Pinot Grigio, both Italian varietals. And uh, let's see what we get on this. Get a little bit of apple, some uh, white flower component comes through on this one. Get a little grassy notes, which is interesting. So there's some definitely some peach and apricot coming on through there. A little bit of orange blossom coming through. Interesting nose, I like it. Let's see what we get on the palate. Nice wine, um, real refreshing. You know, it's got the reason the Moscato in it, but the Moscato, you can taste the Moscato, get a little bit of that orange, orange peel thing. A lot of tangerine notes, but what I like about this wine is it's got a nice acidic background to it, which is interesting. It makes it, so it's not, there's no flabbiness to this wine at all. It's got a good, solid, acidic background. It's not laser sharp, but I mean, it's there, which is good. Little lemon zest, like I said, tangerine orange. You can taste the orange blossom element of it, and definitely white flowers come through on this one. You know, this is a nice wine because I can see it pairing with Asian foods, but at the same time, it's got enough acid. I would have this with shellfish. I wouldn't have mind having this with oysters. Wouldn't hurt my feelings at all. Definitely a a deck wine, you could say. Um, curious what the alcohol is on this. I always hate it when I do this, you guys. I'm sorry. My eyesight is terrible. It looks like about 12.9%. Yeah, I believe that's 12.9% alcohol. Let's look at the tech sheet. 12.5. Excuse me. Sorry, guys. Anyway, this is a delicious wine. There's a little bit of apple and melon in there. No, this is good. Good wine. It's hard to spit out a delicious, it's a almost a 10 on the delicious factor. Good acidity, finishes fresh, nice and clean. I like this wine. I'm giving it a B plus. Let's move on to the red. B plus, $11 white. I'm gonna have to tell my supplier who carries the other handcraft wines to bring this on to bring that white on board for sure. Dripping a little bit. Okay, on to the red. Going back to the tech sheet. I hope you don't mind if I use these. It's hard to remember all the things in this wine. 
I decided I'm not going to depend on my memory, on my programs anymore. I hope that's okay. If you have issue with that, if you think that's wrong, let me know. Make a comment. Come into the store like so many of you do. Tell me what you think um, about whether I should have some notes. I don't know. I'm telling you, sometimes it just doesn't all stick. So this red blend is a blend of Zinfandel, Merlot, Syrah, Malbec, Sangiovese, the Italian side, and Petite Syrah. So mostly New World varietals, um, you know, the Zin, uh, Malbec, well, not, not New World all, but you know what I'm saying. One Italian, Sangiovese. It was interesting when I was looking up some information on this that uh, the winemaker and Cheryl just decided that adding a, an Italian varietal, whether it's to their Cab, their Merlot, whatever, it just gives it a little bit of aromatic lift, a little bit more pop, so to speak. This has Zinfandel in it, was interesting. Talking about grilling wines, I oh, probably should show you the label real quick. Almost lost track there. There you go. Handcraft. $11. I'm going with 11 bucks. I think that's what you're going to be able to buy this for in most places. So I'm getting some plum notes. Blackberry and plums. That's what I'm getting off of it. Now, you know, it's interesting. On the tech sheet, it gives um, uh, aromatic notes. But you know what? Never, ever... I never go off of those. I always go off my own. You know, we're, we all smell different things, what we're associated with, what, uh, you know, things that we're familiar with. You know, like you're never, gonna, uh, you're never going to smell gooseberry if you've never smelled a gooseberry. But sometimes, you know, the wine geeky guys like us, you know, we go out and smell gooseberries. We go out and smell these things so we can figure out what we're getting on the wine. But I get a lot of plums, a little dusty element going coming through. I get some currants. I can't remember if I rinsed or not. How can I remember what's in the wine if I can't even remember if I rinsed? But I must have because it was a little bit of drip action going on there. Anyway, sorry. A little bit of brain cramp. I was so concentrated on the... I like that dusty element coming through it. It's not like a, a bowl of fruit, for sure. I even get a little tar action going on. Interesting. Hey, brave in it. White shirt, drinking wine, not a good idea. Not a good idea. Do not do this at home. Let's see what we get on the palate. Zinfandel definitely comes through. I get a light black raspberry currants. A juicy wine, there's no doubt about it, but it's still, again, it has a good, bright, acidic backbone to it, which is nice for grilling. If you're doing grilled meats, hamburgers, pizza, whatever, this would do well. If you like Zinfandel, you're going to love this wine. I think it has a nice good brightness to it. Still has that kind of jammy element, but it doesn't go like goopy jammy on you because, hey, you know, because of that acidic background, I, I get blackberries, currants, raspberry all day. It's interesting, I didn't get that on as much on the nose, but it certainly comes through on the palate. Nice brightness. I think that Sangiovese gives it that nice lift in a bright way. Again, another great deck wine. I, you know, this is, and, and yet there's, you know, there's tannins there. They come through on the backside, a little bit of a grip, a little bit of leather action on the back end. 
those raspberries just keep going with the blended with the currants like currant raspberry sauce coming through on the backside finish is fairly long I get nothing fakey out of this wine which is always interesting sometimes at those price points you know and I mean fake like sometimes my palate is sensitive to um, you know like manipulation and, and I'm not saying they don't I mean uh, manipulation is a bad word sometimes because people you know they add things to wine sometimes but I don't get that I don't get any makeup on this wine so to speak No. You know, serious wine with a juicy kind of, you know, bright, jammy, but not jammy. I don't know where I'm going with that. Anyway, I like the wine. I think this will be a big hit. I think there's a lot of people are going to like this. It kind of crosses the path between, you know, it's not a fruit bomb. It has a little bit of character to it, good acidity, leather on the finish, even a little bit of minerals coming through. Good wine. I'm going to go BB plus on this one also. I think it's a good job. Always makes me nervous when people send me wines. I'm telling them I'm going to do YouTube. You know, I mean, I don't know if I'm, I've never tried these wines before. I am going to ask my uh, distributor to give me, the, uh, give me some samples of their other varietals. I saw them in the book. I'm very curious about those also. Good play. I hope they carry these wines. Excellent job. I like the... Italian varietal idea. I think it comes through in these wines. I think they're excellent. And speaking of Italian wines, I've been reading this book, Passion on the Vine, by Sergio Esposito. He has a wine shop, I guess, in uh, New York. This was written in 2008, not that long ago. I just want to show you this book only because I am so enthralled. Passion on the Vine. And thank you, uh, Giovanni for loaning me this book. I'm almost done. I'm loving it. Excellent read. If you guys want Passion on the Vine by Sergio Esposito. Excellent read. If you're into Italian wines, want to know about food and wine, which uh, Cheryl in Del Cotto is big on food and wine pairing, which makes sense being of Italian heritage. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you're having a great day. I hope you had a great weekend, Memorial Day weekend. I hope you really enjoyed it. And, uh, Cheers. Here's to keeping the snob out of wine.